You asked me a question. Yes, I did. About a new novel. You were thoughtful enough to ask me a serious question, thinking I would be impartial. You undoubtedly thought I was quite alone in the world. Never. No, I, I did not for one I second. I imagine you've been told all kinds of things about me, all bad. No. <laughs> really? I am a widower, I'm sure you've been told. I imagine you've also been told that my wife died whilst gathering blackberries to make me a pie, which is the latest version going around town. Well, uh, none that have been circulating are true. She didn't drown? No. Um, in the sixth month of our marriage, we both, having been best of friends, decided that a friendly separation would be for the best. She lives in London. I haven't seen her for 45 years, but according to my information, she's still in very good health. Although, apparently, she's put on quite a lot of weight. She always loved sweets, although I, I can never remember her baking a cake in her life. I suppose for the people of Hardborough, it's more picturesque to imagine Holt House inhabited by a mourning widower. As you already know, literature has done a lot of damage. Those damn Bronte sisters, for example, by whom you have not included a single copy in those packages to me, for which I am ever so grateful. I imagined you would have read them already. One of the Gipping girls, the third one, lends you a hand in your shop, I believe, and, and that is all the assistance you have at your disposal. I have a bookkeeper who comes in from time to time, and then there's my solicitor. Tom Thornton, you won't get very far with that one. Can't say I'm very fond of Mr. Thornton. You know, Mr. Brundish, there is a certain responsibility about trying to run a bookshop. I imagine there is, especially if not everyone approves of it. There are certain people who are rather put out by your bookshop, Mrs. Green. I refer to Violet Gamut, who had other plans for the old house and who now, it seems, has taken further offences, aren't they? 